It's fun being saved. But sometime, and I close with this, God will put you in funny situations. I was in Denver and then preaching. I went up to Montana and preached at a college in Montana. No, in, uh, Missoula, Montana, I think is where I flew out of. And uh, I had to go to Salt Lake City, Utah, to Denver, Colorado, to Dallas, Texas, to New Orleans, Louisiana. And I don't want to go to all them places because I just want to go to New Orleans, but you got to go. So I said, okay, Lord. And so I took the trip and got to Salt Lake and we changed planes and got on another plane and flew to Denver. I hadn't been home in a while and I couldn't wait to get home. I, was, I said, man, I just want to go home. And I'm standing there and they're starting to load the plane up. And I like a, a, you know, a certain seat on the plane. I always try to get that. And I was just praising the Lord. And I said, boy, it's fun being said, Father, I just thank you, Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I hear your word. I read your word. I flow in your anointing. The Lord said, Jesse, I don't want you to get on the plane. And I said, what? He said, there will be trouble on this plane. Don't get on it. And this is at Stapleton Airport in Denver. I said, trouble? He said, don't get on the plane. He said, take the next flight. Huh. I said, but, but, but Lord, I, I just like to kind of go home, you know? He said, don't get on the plane. Just a simple, I mean, just. So I went to the lady. I said, when is the next flight to, I know you got to go to Dallas to New Orleans. She said, nine hours from now. And I said, God, I don't want to have to stand at the airport for nine hours. He said, you can preach for nine hours. There are a lot of sinners here. You can let your light so shine. Don't get on this plane. There's damage to come. I said, man, God, I tell you what, can't you just heal it? until I get off of it, you know, just fix it, huh? He said, I'm telling you, don't get on that plane. So I was kind of about ready. He said, now, nah. he said, I want you to go tell that, that ticket agent that there's problems on this plane. Tell him, don't load this plane, don't take off. I said, God, they ain't gonna, they gonna think I'm a fruitcake. God, if I go up there and tell them, God told me for y'all not to load this plane. I mean, you know, it's kind of crazy. But when you know the voice of God, you got to do what he said. So I fought it for a few minutes. And there's this guy smoking a big cigar and he chew on it, you know, kind of gross way he did it. But so I walked up and he was happened to be sitting real close to where the ticket. I said, ma'am, uh, I'm going to take the next flight out of here. Uh, I, I, wanna, I said, but the Lord told me to tell you that there's damage that's going to happen on this plane. So you might want to get another one. Don't fly this. She said, who told you? said, the Lord. She said, the Lord who? I said, the Lord. God. Jesus. And she went. <laughs> the first thing, Lord, uh, I said, lady, listen to what I'm saying. I said, if this plane takes off, we got problems. I said, I'm a man of the Lord. I know you think I'm a fruitcake. I know it sounds nuts, but don't fly this plane. She said, well, we're about ready to board. She calls it. You know how to do it. Get on, and this guy gets up from the seat in his cigar. He goes, Phew. I felt so stupid. I said, man, I tell you, this is stupid. Lord, he said, you told him. I said, I told him, but look at them. Look. They all look at me, and people heard me. They began to go on. <laughs> and that just makes you mad. They loaded the plane. The devil said, nine hours, my man. Nine hours. Nine hours. I'm going to drive you nuts for nine hours. <laughs> you know how your flesh just building on you, boy. Sure enough, man, they loaded the plane. They said, mister, are you getting on this plane? I said, don't leave this gate. I'm telling you, God said it. I want to go home more than anybody. I don't want to stay in here nine hours. God, there's something wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with the plane, sir. Are you going to get on the plane or are you going to stay here? You're going to have to put you on standby. You may not make that flight nine hours from now. No. She said, fine. Close the gate. Boom, they closed the thing. So this was the old Stapleton. They're starting to build a new airport now. Got that glass up in the, you know, and I'm standing there feeling like an idiot. Devil said, bozo brain fool, you idiot. <laughs> And I'm going, boy, you right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you idiot. Love, man. Sure enough, they push that plane out with the, uh, that machine. Then they start putting on the engines and stuff. Zzz, you know, you see it, bless God. And they got it all fixed. And they pulled it out like that. It's going to taxi to go to the runway. Sure enough. So, man, after the engines are running, you hear it. Zzz, 
you know, he, he throttles it a little bit to start taxiing, and he, he, he starts to throttle. I guess he goes maybe 25 feet, and she, the thing in the back just blows up. The, 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 this engine back, there, something just, boo doom. I mean, black smoke. I went, <laughs> yeah! I shouted. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I didn't mean to shout. I went, <laughs> look at that, it's working. But boy, they towed that plane at smoke, man, and people come flying out of that chute. I mean, come out of that, man. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> just enjoying myself that the plane almost blew up, you know, <laughs> which was wrong. I mean, something happened. I don't know what, because I don't know nothing about high engine, but I mean, smoke blew. People come flying out that plane. I mean, they slid down that thing and all that stuff. This was years ago. And uh, they brought him back up and they said, it's going to take two hours to get another plane out, but we'll have another plane out. And then they grabbed that thing and took it off. That old boy, they'll come back. Everybody was freaking out, and the old boy, boy, he lit a cigar. I just looked at him and smiled. <laughs> Showing up about two hours, two and a half hours later, they had another plane, and they had it fixed and everything. They started boarding, and the Lord said, you can get on that one. So that old boy come up there with that cigar. He said, hey, Rev, is this one okay? <laughs> you know, God will honor you. He will honor you. He will, I'm saying that to say, it's fun being saved. He will honor you when the devil's making you think you're the biggest idiot in town. I said, yes, sir, it's okay. He said, what seat you got? I said, I got 10A. He said, I want 10B. <laughs> I had to smell that old cigar man all the way to Dallas and New Orleans. It's fun being saved. You know why it's fun being saved? Because everywhere you go, and I close, God protects you. He protects you. He's got his angels in charge around you. He's not worried about it, so why should you? Think about that. He's walking in perfect faith and he expects his people to walk in perfect faith. 